up-and-coming fighter Don Shanus was planning on making a splash in MMA and he had one man in his mind. Unfortunately for him, that name was Sadiq Yusuf. So how did Yusuf dominate Shanus so quickly at UFC Vegas 61? And is Yusuf stuck in the rankings? Plus, how was Alexander Volkanovsky breaking the featherweight division wide open? Stay tuned for all of that plus more coming right up. First up, how Don Shanus went from hero to zero. Don Shameless Shanus debuted at UFC Vegas 61 with big plans. He wanted to take Sadiq Yusuf's place, who's been working his way up the rankings since 2018. As the former Cage Titans featherweight champion, Shanus couldn't wait to get his first taste of the UFC. In the build-up to the fight, he said that he was going to come out of left field to upset Yusuf, and he certainly had a lot of confidence in himself. He only got the call for the event a month earlier, but thought that he was more than ready than ever. Shanus admitted that the pandemic had absolutely screwed and the time was right to come back. In fact, he was so hungry for the fight that he accepted the fight before even knowing who the opponent was, but maybe he should have double-checked first. Sadiq Yusuf is no fighter to take lightly. He's coming off an impressive win over Alex Ciceras and has earned himself a 7-1 record in the UFC. The Nigerian-American is a dangerous rising star in the featherweight division and he put a quick stop to Shanus in Vegas. He was coming in as the 10-1 favorite and he wasted no time proving why. Within 30 seconds, he had Shanus on the ground and tapping out with a guillotine choke. It was over so quickly that if you blinked, you probably would have missed it. Next, Sadiq opens up about trauma. After that pure domination, Yusuf called out Chan Sung Jung, also known as the Korean Zombie. It would be the biggest fight of his career so far, and a win over the Korean would put him in a good spot for a future title challenge. But he has revealed that he was struggling with much more than just training for the fight. He had a life-changing event that threatened to derail his entire career. The featherweight division is probably the most stacked that it's ever been. With the likes of Alexander Volkanovsky, Max Holloway, and Yar Rodriguez at the top, it's no easy task to have success. But if there's one man to watch out for, it's Sadiq Yusuf. Unfortunately for him, when Giga Chikadze withdrew from their fight, it put another roadblock to his rise into the top 10 of the division. He's going to have to do it the hard way if he wants to, and outside of the octagon, things haven't been much easier. After doing the easy work of Don Shanus, he said that the win was bittersweet. Sadiq opened up about the fact that his brother died shortly before the fight. He was able to maintain his composure until after the fight. He said, I just broke down crying backstage. I had tried to bottle it all up so I wouldn't feel anything during the fight, but when that was all over, I just started crying. With that performance, despite what was on his mind, Yusuf had definitely proven that he had the heart of a champion. The next featherweight to watch, Arnold Allen. Every name in the featherweight division is exciting right now, and one to watch out for is Arnold Allen, who has beaten Dan Hooker, Sadiq Yusuf, and Nick Lentz in his past three fights to add to his near-perfect 18-1 record. And Allen is no newcomer to the UFC either. He has been fighting with the promotion since 2015 and has earned nine straight wins, putting him at number six in the featherweight rankings. As a young fighter growing up in England, he said that he was inspired by those who came before him, like Michael Bisping. Allen is a part of a new wave of British fighters who are taking the UFC by storm. He is a teammate of the newly crowned middleweight champion Leon Edwards and was ecstatic when Edwards pulled off a spectacular upset win against Kamaru Usman. Allen said that it was a reminder of how hard work pays off and it was a huge boost to him. And he'll need every boost he can get. Allen's next fight at UFC Vegas 63 will be his toughest one yet. Arnold will be going head-to-head -head with Calvin Qatar, the first top five opponents he's ever faced. Talking about the challenge, Allen said, it makes me feel like I'm where I'm supposed to be in the main event and fighting a quality opponent. With Alexander Volkanovsky quickly running out of opponents to fight at the top of the division, the winner between Allen and Qatar could decide who's next in line to challenge. Up next, why does Henry Cejudo think that four months isn't enough time for Volkanovsky to prepare, and could we see a two-part Oliveira Volkanovsky showdown? So don't go anywhere. Volkanovsky is leaving the division. But if anyone wants to take the title off of Alexander Volkanovsky, they're going to have to hurry up. After being king of the weight class since 2019, Volkanovsky now has much bigger sights than a single title, and he announced those intentions at UFC 280 after Islam Makachev beat Charles Oliveira for the lightweight belt. Volkanovski entered the octagon after the fight and agreed to face off against Makachev at UFC 284 in Australia next year. It will be Volkanovski's first time moving up a division and he has his work cut out for him. Makachev is considered to be one of the best in the sport and has been trained under the wing of UFC legend Khabib Nurmagomedov. But Volkanovski thinks that he can give Makachev a run for his money. The Australian admitted that Islam would be very strong but doesn't think that it's not so simple with him. He said, to get me down is hard enough but then to get me flat on my back and hold me down is very, very hard. But for fans worried that Volkanovski is fleeing the featherweight division, don't worry. The champion says his weight jumping doesn't mean he's giving up on featherweight. He promised that he wouldn't hold up any divisions and that he would be as active as he is right now. In fact, Volkanovski says that it's the divisions that are holding him up because he would rather be fighting already. Come on, Dana, make it happen. Next, Cahuto thinks Volkanovski is kidding himself. Volkanovski has spent so long as champion that he might be getting a little too big for his boots. Former two-division champion Henry Cahuto thinks that the Australian might be underestimating his opponent this 
time. If Volkanovski does fight Makachev at UFC 284, that's in February next year, only a few months away. And according to Cahuto, Volkanovski needs much more time than that if he plans on beating Makachev. He says that Volkanovski needs time to fight the right training partners and coaches to find holes in Makachev's game, but there are bigger problems. Cahuto isn't convinced that the Volk has a strong enough ground game. Charles Oliveira went into UFC 280 with the most submissions in UFC history, while Cahuto said that he hasn't seen a single submission from Volkanovski. Summing up, Cahuto wasn't optimistic. He said, I think Volkanovski's pound for pound title is going to be short lived, and I think the wrath of Islam Makachev is just a little too much. So far, almost no one has had an answer for Islam Makachev. He only has one TKO loss, which came at the hands of Adriana Martins in his second UFC fight. But apart from that, he has proven himself to be a worthy successor of Khabib Nurmagomedov. If Volkanovski wants to beat him, maybe he needs to go to Dagestan to train. Next, Oliveira challenges Volkanovski. Charles Oliveira may have lost the championship to fight against Islam Makachev in Abu Dhabi, but that doesn't mean his future is any less bright. After climbing his way to the top with an 11-fight win streak, he has bought himself some respect in the UFC. Unfortunately, though, a quick rematch to reclaim his belt doesn't look to be on the table. Makachev beat Oliveira comfortably, submitting the Brazilian in the middle of the second round. According to Michael Bisbing, Oliveira has three options for his next fight. Either Dustin Poirier, Justin Gaethje, or Michael Chandler would make sense. Bisping said that all of those fights were epic and that all of them would be keen to right the wrongs in a rematch. Plus, all three of those guys are top five fighters, and another win over any of them would leave no doubt that Oliveira deserves another title fight. But in the build-up to UFC 280, Oliveira floated the idea of dropping down to featherweight to fight Volkanovski. He said that he would even fight Volkanovski twice, first at lightweight and then again at featherweight. But after losing his status at champion, the appeal for Volkanovski to match himself up against Oliveira isn't so high anymore. The Volk was happy to agree to the Brazilian's terms before, but he's now more interested in Makachev. Sorry, Charles, you've got to stay at the top if you want to fight another champion. Do you think Volkanovski has what it takes to beat Makachev? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again in the next one.